Minecraft is built upon items and blocks. So the inventory management and items had to be integrated deeply in object D. Let's start by asking what is an item. Each item is defined with some data. This spawn egg has the ID Minecraft column chicken spawn egg for example. All items also have a count and other NBT properties are also accessible. Most items also have an inventory in some kind. The position in the inventory is saved as a slot. In NBT an item looks like this. Especially with many items in big inventories this can get very confusing. So in object D, the item provides a dot object that combines all the data, suggests properties and automatically fits the context. Let's save such an item in a variable. So we say item my item equals a new item. And this item has a dynamic type here. That means you can just insert a string here with your item ID. You can also insert a block any block type here you have the whole list and there is also a specific item type that has all the other items in the game and you can just search for them. The item has also the count property so you can just say count 10. There is a damage property and if you work with custom models you can just say model and then your model id I don't know and this would be added to the nbt automatically. We also have a name property where you can just insert a text component or about text and these text components in this upcoming video here. And of course each item also can have a lore which would be a list of text components. And finally there is also a NBT property here which just accepts a dart map. So pretty usual raw JSON in here. Well we have an item now but to do anything with this item we have the replace item widget. This widget sets the data of a specific slot to your item. So for the entity, you just define the entity here as first argument, and then a slot in the entity, for example, the player's hotbar here, and then the item itself. This would be five apples here. We can try the replace item widget here. We just say entity.all. The slot should be a new slot object and you can see there are a few presets here. We just set the hotbar 5 and then of course the item and here we can just insert my item because we saved it in a variable before. So let's generate that and we can see the replace item command here which has all arguments set here. And of course you can also use replace item dot block to insert a location in here and manipulate the inventories of a chest for example. We already used the slot a second ago. The slots can be set with the slot object. This object always consists out of a slot property here that is used for replace item and then also the ID that is saved in the data in the end. In this case inventory 5 would mean the sixth inventory field but this has the ID 14 like you can see and the slot automatically switches between these values depending on where you use it. The ideas are pretty useful to identify a slot, but for a human it's pretty hard. So I thought why not divide an inventory in rows and columns like this. To find a slot like this one, it would be significantly easier. So with the slot.inf you just set the row and column as a double and object D calculates the replace item slot and ID for you. And of course, this also works for chests and droppers or dispensers. You just use a slot.chest or slot.drop. The item can also be combined with the data widget. Let's say we have the chicken spawn egg from the beginning here. And this actually has a method called get map to get the MBT data in a Dart map. This would give us the raw MBT data here. So let's use the data widget. If you want to know more about NBT data and the data widget, you can check out the last widget week. Let's merge the NBT of our entity and we want to change the inventory. And the inventory is always a list of items with their slot set. And here we can just insert my item and we want to use get map. 
you have also the option to get the NBT directly as a string, but we want the map right here. Also, when we want to use an item with data.merge, we have to set the count and slot in the item itself. So let's set count to one and the slot to our new slot.inf. And we want the fourth row and the first column. So this would be the first hotbar item. Let's save that and generate it. And you can see the data merge here, which sets the inventory of every player to our spectral arrow here in the slot zero, so in our hotbar. If you want to read more about items and the slot value, check out the documentation at stevatus.com slash objectd slash documentation and also take a look at the whole objectd playlist here.